it's very relatable, I think, especially when we're constantly obsessed with social media and keeping up. We're we posting enough. We're not posting it, you know, like is my do I have good enough lighting? I have 17 lights right now with <laughs> full hair and makeup, right? So I hope I'd be perceptive as uh, smart, funny, and gorgeous. <laughs> Hey there, it's Kristen, and today we're chatting with Good on Paper director Kimmy Gatewood and actors Ryan Hansen and Margaret Cho. Enjoy! Kimmy, can you tell me about Good on Paper and what drew you to directing this film? Good on Paper is a story of Andrea Singer. She's a struggling uh, stand-up comic looking for love, and uh, she eventually meets a guy who sh- is uh, checks all the, the lists, the, the boxes, and uh, turns out he's not so great after all. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I think, um, you know, we... Uh, I've been through this story before and uh, met someone, especially like, I I never did internet dating, which is sad. I really wish I had, but uh, I can imagine like having to read a profile, how great that sounds. And then being the person being like, Ooh, (laughs) and I wanted to tell a story about a strong, funny, complicated uh, female heroine who you think has got it together. And you wonder how she uh, falls for a guy. Um, like this but as we all know it's much more complicated and fun uh, tale than it seems to be being a fan of Eliza's stand-up Margaret Cho's stand-up they're such boss ladies they're incredible uh Kimmy Gay with the director who I was a fan of as an actress and she was directing this and then the chance to get to play kind of uh offbeat charming weird guy was super attractive to me I, I was all in and the script is wonderful i'm a long time fan of eliza's stand-up comedy and also just her as a person you know we're old friends and so it was really fun to be able to step into this role and we just had such a great time together one of the things that's crazy about this film is that it's kind of based off of a real story. Did you guys know that going into it? And, and what kind of, I guess, um, you know, background did Eliza give you guys um, in terms of, you know, the, the real life characters you're kind of portraying? She was great because she just gave us so much information and it's very rare where you could work with, um, to act with the screenwriter. It almost never happens. So it was really just so valuable to have her there because she lived the story and was able to show us how to play it. And especially for for my guy, you know, uh, I, all my scenes were with Eliza, and she she lived it with the, with this dude. So any kind of choice that I thought I was making, I would ask her, I'm like, is that how he would do it? And she'd be like, no, he would go this way or this way, you know. So it was wonderful being able to w- work with her because she knows this she knows the story so well because she lived it. This story, I think, also really kind of centers around people feeling a little bit inadequate in their lives, which I think is something we all feel sometimes. I'd love to to talk about how you brought that into your direction. I got to develop the for a few months a script with Eliza and one of the themes that I was really pulling out of the script was that of perception how we perceive ourselves how we perceive uh, each other um, how we think we're being perceived how we want to be perceived and so we really worked on the uh, the character of Serena who is her kind of uh, enemy in the film her and um, and why kind of get to the bottom of why someone like Dennis would do something like this but also why Andrea would uh, fall for something like this and and uh, what she thinks she needs versus what she wa- actually needs. And so all the characters are kind of through that lens. If uh, On your second and third watch, Kristen, uh, <laughs> you can see where kind of thematically it, it kind of all uh, ties together with that. And it's very relatable, I think, especially when we're constantly obsessed with social media and keeping up. We're we posting enough. We're not posting it, you know, like is my, do I have good enough lighting? I have 17 lights right now. <laughs> With full hair and makeup, right? So I hope I'd be perceptive as uh, smart, funny, and gorgeous. <laughs> I think we all, no matter what kind of field of work you're in, you, we all feel that at certain points in our life. And, you know, for this character, you do feel bad for him at first. You kind of get why he's kind of maybe fibbing a little bit to kind of to present himself a little better, but then it just gets out of control and becomes this whole kind of monster. Now, I'd love to uh, dive a little bit more, Margaret, into your role. You know, you're playing a person who's a really strong friend and ally to Andrea, helping her figure out this sketchy guy, defending her against people who say women aren't funny. What do you kind of hope that people take away from this film in terms of women supporting women? I think it's really important for women to support women and, and women in comedy know that for sure. Like we're all good friends. We all support each other so much. And uh, so I think this really reflects our real life relationship in a lot of ways. So 
I'm really glad to have that message out there, women supporting women. Prior to Good on Paper, you directed episodes of Girls 5 Eva, The Babysitter's Club, you've acted in Glow and Atypical. With this film being your you know, feature-length directorial debut, how did those kind of past experiences influence this project? I think with every job that you do, you learn something new. Being on a show like Glow as an actor, I was three seasons on a television show directors um, uh, on the planet, Jesse Peretz, Claire Scanlon, uh, Lynn Shelton, and see their styles and how it influenced my style as a director. And also just as an actor, what I appreciated, what can help me bring out my best performances. And there's sometimes as an actor where I felt like I was frustrated because I could, I wasn't being heard or they didn't understand the character and just um, giving actors agency, I think is what I've learned. And obviously moving from set to set to set, you have to be pliable and uh, really know your story. So uh, just having all those awesome experiences definitely kept me sharp. And I also practice saying action a lot. Action. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. I mean, those projects and this one, you know, I think really show uh, just a really strong focus on like powerful women. Yes, that's why I became a director is because I wanted to uh, I wanted to see more stories about women, complicated, funny women. And so I thought, well, if anyone's going to do it, it's got to be me. If you like this one, you can check out more of my interviews right over here and I'll catch you the next one. See ya. <laughs>